G'day everyone, um, Jim Q1 here, Guy. Um, look, I uh, just wanted to talk about a series I'm going to do, um, so a five part series on some of the biggest gold nuggets ever found in the world. Um, this is sort of the lead up to the 150th anniversary, the finding of the biggest one, which was the Welcome Strange that was found near Maligal. So in the five part series, um, we're gonna be looking in the area known as the Golden Triangle in Victoria, um, which is the, basically the richest gold field uh, in the world, but also looking at a smaller triangle where a lot of these very, very large gold nuggets have been found, you know, up to two and a half thousand ounces, and obviously the current gold price of about $1,700 an ounce. Um, very nice finds if you could actually get to them. So the area that I'll be looking at so in the, in the five nuggets that we, uh, or the five finds and that we'll be looking at, uh, is basically an area that's sort of bounded by uh, Tarnagulla to the east, across to Maligal, where the Welcome Stranger was found, and then up to um, Kingau, where the largest nugget ever found with a metal detector was found. So what I'm going to take you through is if, uh, give you a little bit of a history of the the towns or the, the areas nearby. Um, we will also have a look at the geology. So I'll be putting together a few maps and showing you how you can use sort of um, Google to actually overlay some of the uh, old maps there. And also obviously talk about the, the finds. So we actually go actually physically in the area or the broad area where these are find, found. So you can actually physically see what uh, the ground looks like. Um, the other part about this is all of these five nuggets could have been found by one of these. Which is a, this is a GPX 4500, mind that. Um, but any, uh, any reasonable new gold detector these days would have found all five of these nuggets. So there's a, just a couple of things. Obviously, not obviously, but this area has both um, public land or crown land, which if you have one of these, or probably actually a newer one of these, but a miner's right. You're, you can actually go into these areas and hopefully find something maybe a little bit bigger than this and closer to um, what the other, these nuggets that we'll go through uh, are. The, so there's one thing I will a cavity on this, is that this is an area that's got a lot of private land and you're obviously not allowed on that private land um, you don't want to get picked up for, for trespassing, so please don't try to jump fences. Um, the reason for this is, is quite clear, because it's, it's number one, it's against the law. Um, but it doesn't obviously help um, the rest of the prospectors that are out there. There's plenty of um, public uh, land out there to go through, and you basically will get caught. You know, maybe maybe 30 years ago, you might have got away, got away with it now, but um, each and every one of the... Uh, Property owners has one of these, and within minutes, the old bush telegraph, and you'll either be met by the local copper, or the um, or the property owner, probably by the time you've actually tried to try to go over the fence. So please don't use any of this information to to trespass into areas that you're not supposed to. Um, I really really hope you enjoy the five part series, and um, yeah, looking forward to um, to sharing the on ground experiences with it and. Please feel free to uh, make comments and, and, and ask, ask a few questions about it. So let's go to part two and the big one, the Welcome Stranger. Yeah, g'day everyone. Well, this is where the big one was found, the Welcome Stranger. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background about um, Maligal, which is a town just a couple of k's sort of that away. Uh, so it, it was rushed about uh, 1852, so one of the early rush towns, and hit probably a bit of a maximum around 1855, and probably had about 16,000 diggers uh, on the site uh, then. Um, it was a little, little bit later till the big uh, Welcome Stranger was found, that was found in 1869, so we're just about to celebrate um, the 150th anniversary of that. So that's just a little bit of background around sort of the area.
Okay, so a little bit about the geology. Again, this is very much alluvial ground. Um, and it's basically underpinned by silurium um, slates and uh, sandstones, which basically basically give a bottom to it. And a lot of this, so especially uh, this area, the silurium stuff sort of gets back around sort of 200 million years old. So as you can see, there's some really, really good indicators here um, of um, gold-bearing ground, which shock horror. Um, so to give you an idea, the uh, Bulldog Lead uh, or the Bulldog Reef runs through here and there's a number of different reefs. So I think just over the back here is uh, Queen's Reef um, and there's just a number of, of reef lines that run uh, along this sort of area. So um, yeah, quite a uh, extensively searched area as you can imagine. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just a quite a quite a beautiful sort of area and peaceful sort of area um, might not have been quite so peaceful 150 years ago when the guys um, guys found it cheers so this is all just near the, near the monument here so you can see some of the quartz conglomerate um, and beautiful look at that beautiful alluvial washed washed gold in there so Probably a few, a few bits of gold here, here and now, but um, as you can imagine, every man and his dog <laughs> has been over this place with uh, with a metal detector. And this, uh, here, all the beautiful clays, clays and slates as well. So, yes. So there you go. If only we could just walk onto ground like this and go. Ah, oh, well, there must be a, a welcome stranger here somewhere. <laughs> Righty, -o. so a little bit about the find. So it was found uh, early February, um, I think it was the 5th of February in 1869, and um, by uh, John Deason and Richard Oates. Two guys have been working uh, an area through here for a little while before that. Um, again, nothing like uh, uh, a little bit of luck. So pick, he put the pick at John. Uh, Decent, put the pick into the ground, whack an inch down, and the rest is history, as they say. So it was a obviously a, uh, a massive find, and it took them a fair amount, a fair while to dig it out. And it was actually on a Friday, so um, which is you know when you want to try to um, take gold somewhere, given um, the banks and so forth, and uh, safe places to hide them weren't um, went open on a Saturday and also on the gold fields nothing happens on the Sunday so it's basically like the Sabbath so uh, no one actually even prospected on the, on the Sundays in the field so um, so the interesting part was that they've had this massive nugget that they ha actually had to hold on to um, before they could actually take it up to Denali which is probably about, uh, about 10 miles or something from here so and again not a short distance and um, yeah, it wasn't. It, you, what you also got to remember in, in the old in in the gold rush times, it was it was like the wild west. Most people slept with a loaded loaded gun under their bed, whether that be in a canvas tent or some sort of mud hut that they had made up.
So the unfortunate thing about the welcome stranger is we don't actually physically have it, you know, in a museum somewhere or something like that. So of the, I think the original weight was around 110 kilos. Um, I think the gold weight that they, they actually eventually pulled out of it was about 70 kilos. Um, and unfortunately it was basically stripped apart. It was cut, a, there's an anvil in it, um, Denali, where it was, um, you know, cut in a number of pieces because it couldn't fit on the scales, for starters. Um, then part of it got smelted. Small parts got given to friends and family as a celebration of the nugget. So, um, unfortunately there's uh, not, all there are is a, um, you know, I think there's a wood carving of of, of, of an example of it but yeah it's it's you know it's one, I suppose one of the things that we would love to still have in actually uh, in our history to actually to look at that but um, yeah big big piece of history and again um, it might have been a different story if they had found it maybe earlier in the week um, maybe on a Monday or Tuesday and maybe t taken to somewhere different um, we might have a different sort of story to tell but um, unfortunately we haven't got a lot of big pictures and so forth or we can't you know take our kids and so forth to museums to have a look at this um, this nugget and as I said it's still it's the biggest nugget ever found in the world and again it was found at one inch so you would find it with any any type of metal detector which um, which is quite exciting given given I live in the area and um, yeah there's no reason why there's something maybe not as big but um, um, you know, just as you know, there's some great great you know, there's great gold right through this sort of area so it's it's you know it's a passion of mine and um, yeah it's great to just get out here and just to get out in the bush here so yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed um, the uh, just a little bit of background on the Welcome Stranger, and um, yeah, it's I suppose every every prospector um, in the world when they go out, you know, hopes that the next thing that they find is something of that size, and um, hopefully someone else will find something as big, and we'll get another another gold rush uh, happening in that area. So all the best out there.